Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I'm super excited to announce that I'm going to start a brand new tutorial series on this channel. I'm going to take you over the shoulder with me to build an entire blockchain application from scratch. I'll show you how to write the smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. We'll write tests against them. We'll put them on a blockchain and we'll also develop a client side website to talk to the blockchain. So let's go take a look at what we're going to build. This is a decentralized social network that runs on the blockchain where users are rewarded for creating good content, all right? They're able to share their status updates or their social media posts on the blockchain and then other users can tip them with cryptocurrency and the best posts in the uh, social network rise to the top. And this is also a censorship resistant social network where no intermediaries can tell you, you know, what you can and can't post or what content you can't see. And if you've done any of my other tutorials on my channel before, there's some cool new features inside of this one. I've got these fancy identicons where people can create their own avatars based on their Ethereum addresses. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. In this video series, I'm gonna show you how to build this blockchain application step by step. And don't worry if you don't understand anything about blockchain or you're not even much of a programmer. I'm gonna show you everything step by step. And so today is the first day in the tutorial series. I'm gonna show you how to get this app set up and get rolling. We're gonna start building today. And then I'm gonna release the rest of the videos over the next couple of weeks. And whenever that's done, you're gonna get one giant video and one uh, full length step by step article on my website that's gonna allow you to follow along with this. Only thing I ask in return is to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. That really helps these videos get found so more people can benefit from these tutorials. All right, so let's jump in and start programming. Before you get started, you need to make sure you have Node.js already installed on your computer. You can see if you have Node installed by going to your terminal and typing node-v. You can install Node with a package manager like Homebrew, or you can download it directly from the Node.js website. The first item in the blockchain developer toolkit is a personal blockchain. We're going to use Ganache as our personal blockchain for this tutorial. You can head over to truffleframework.com forward slash Ganache to download it. You can click this download link. And whenever you've downloaded it, make sure you install it. And when you open it, you've got a local blockchain running. So what is Ganache? You know, what is a personal blockchain? Well, a personal blockchain is like a real blockchain network, you know, that's connected to the public or anyone can connect to it, but it runs on a computer. It's, you know, a closed network. And Ganache basically, you know, is a process that runs on a computer that spins up this blockchain and runs on a server. So we can use this to develop smart contracts. We can run tests against it. We can run scripts against the network, develop applications that actually talk to this blockchain. And it's really helpful and it's an invaluable tool in the blockchain developer toolkit. So um, if you open Ganache, you know, you'll see you know, 10 accounts listed here. These are the addresses to each account on the side. And you'll see you know, these balances. You'll see 100 Ether. And this is the Ethereum cryptocurrency that each account has and is you know, required to you know, pay gas fees in the network and stuff like that. All right, so that's an overview of uh, the Ganache personal blockchain network. And we're going to leave Ganache here set up in our project because we're going to need it uh, running in order to develop our project the next dependency is the Truffle Framework. We're going to use the Truffle Framework to develop Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. You can install Truffle by going to your terminal and typing npm install g truffle at 5.0.5. .5. And it's important that you use that exact version in order to follow along with this tutorial. So Truffle is a suite of tools that allows us to you know, develop smart contracts, write tests against smart contracts, deploy smart contracts to the blockchain. It gives us development console, and it also allows us to develop client side applications inside of our project. So it does a lot, and I'm gonna show off all those features in this tutorial. The next dependency is the MetaMask extension for Google Chrome. Remember that the Ethereum blockchain is a network, and we need a special browser extension in order to connect to that network. And that's where MetaMask comes into play. MetaMask will allow us to connect to the blockchain with our personal account and actually interact with the smart contract that we'll develop in this tutorial. You can install MetaMask by going to the Google Chrome Web Store and searching for MetaMask and clicking Install. And once you've installed it, just make sure that you enable it inside of your Chrome extensions like this. You can also see the little fox icon in your Extensions tab. Now that you have all your dependencies installed, let's go ahead and start building the project. Find wherever you downloaded the Ganache personal blockchain and open it. Once you see a screen like this, click Quick Start. 
And after that's finished loading, you'll have a blockchain running. This will be the development blockchain that we'll use to create our smart contracts. This blockchain comes with 10 accounts, and each of these accounts comes pre-mined with 100 fake Ether. Each of these accounts is going to represent all the users on our network. In this case, anyone who can post on the social network and give tips. The account addresses are going to be like the username on the blockchain, and the private keys are going to be like their password. And also don't get too excited because this Ether isn't actually worth anything on the real Ethereum network because all of the Ether on this blockchain just stays inside of Ganache. The next thing we want to do is create the files for the project. There are a few different ways to do this. You could do it natively with the Truffle suite by creating a new Truffle project like this. You could say Truffle, init, and this would create a new Truffle project for you. But instead of doing that, I'm going to use a, a template that I created to help us get started fast. All right, you can find that on my GitHub, and I'll put a link down in the description below. This is just github.com forward slash DAP University forward slash starter kit. So we can use this by copying this URL, going back to the terminal, and typing git clone, and then paste in the URL. All right, hit space, and we'll create the project like this. We'll say um, social dash network. And this is going to create our project for us. Now we can enter into that newly created directory like this. We'll say CD social network. All right. I'll just check out the files that are in here. I'll say ls dash l. That's how you list all the files inside of this directory. Now I'll open it in my text editor like this. I'm using Sublime Text, and I've configured a shortcut on my system to where I can open Sublime Text like this. I'll say subl dot. All right, that just opens Sublime Text in the current directory. All right, there we go. So here you can see on the side, there are some files already created. The first file I'll look at is this truffle-config file. This is the file we use to configure the Truffle project, like tell it the blockchain we want to connect to. This is how we tell our Truffle project that we want to connect to uh, the Ganache instance that we just set up, right? And tell it that Ganache is running on port uh, 7545 on localhost. You can see that right here, all right? And while I'm looking at this file, I want to mention something, all right? This, this project works slightly differently from a standard Truffle project. I've actually customized this uh, to put the smart contracts in a specific folder. You can see I have a source folder here. That's because I want to put my smart contracts and their uh, ABIs inside of a directory that can be exposed to the client side application, which we're also going to build inside this project. And don't worry if you don't understand that just yet. I'll explain that when we get there. But just in case you've worked on other Truffle projects before, uh, just understand that I'm going to be doing things slightly differently, but you shouldn't have any trouble following along with me step by step in this tutorial. So inside of this source directory, we have a place for the smart contracts. We can see a uh, existing smart contract inside of here. All right, this is the migrations smart contract that comes with the standard Truffle project. This simply is a smart contract that allows you to put new ones on the blockchain. So we'll create our new social network smart contract here momentarily. Um, we can also see a uh, some files for the front end, which we're going to build in React.js. So you can see a main app.js component. We'll customize this here. And we'll create more code inside of here to actually interact with the blockchain and build out the client side application. So let's go ahead and start the development server just to make sure that um, the project was installed correctly. And actually, before we do that, we need to uh, install our node modules. Because we have a package.json file here that uh, includes all of the dependencies that we need in order to build this project so they don't have to create them one by one. All right, this is one of the reasons I've used the starter kit is to save a lot of time. So let's go ahead and uh, install our dependencies. I'll just say npm install. All right, that worked. And I'll make a mention while I'm here. If you see some uh, extra output here, um, you might just have some warnings, right? If, as long as you see this success message down here, uh, it's okay. You know, your dependencies installed correctly. It's certainly not ideal to have a lot of warnings, um, but you know, we can try to fix those as we go on. Now that the dependencies are installed, let's go ahead and start the development server. I'm going to open a new tab here um, so that I can have, you know, a server running and then a tab to work in. And so I'm going to run the server like this. I'll say npm uh, run start. 
All right, so it looks like it already opened up a new tab for me in my web browser. I'll go ahead and pull that uh, onto my screen here. And there we go. There's the starter kit that comes with our project. All right, so this starter kit gave us a lot of stuff for free. We have a front end framework so that we don't have to write a lot of CSS. We have some UI that we can just simply customize for our purposes in this project, right? We have a nav bar. Uh, I've got some nice looking fonts, some, you know, some styles for our text and links. I uh, even got a logo here. Um, and also we have the React JS framework that we can use to write JavaScript to power this front end application and talk to the smart contracts, right? You know, React is a component based library that's going to save us a lot of time and headaches uh, in order to develop the project. And don't worry if you don't know much about React, I'm going to show you everything step by step in this video. Now I'm going to close this out because we verified that it's set up properly. All right, let's go ahead and kill this. And I'm going to go back to my project and start creating the smart contract. And I'm gonna go back to my Truffle project and start creating the smart contract and see if we can deploy a basic copy to Ganache just to make sure that our project's set up, you know, that this is talking to the blockchain correctly and that we can indeed actually create a new smart contract. So in order to do that, I'll go to the source directory and find the contracts directory. I'll open this migration uh, contract again, and I'll create a new file here. All right, and I'll call this social, capital S, social, uh, capital N, network, dot SOL. All right, and that's the extension that we use for the Solidity programming language uh, that we'll use to create the Ethereum smart contract. All right, so this is the file that we'll use to write the social network smart contract. And there's one thing we need to do before we write any other Solidity code. We need to tell this file what version of Solidity that we're going to use. And we do that just like this. All right. We say pragma Solidity. We use a caret and we say 0 0.5.0. .0. That basically just means any version of Solidity um, that's version 0 0.5.0 or greater, all right? Now, um, we're going to create the smart contract like this. We'll use the contract keyword, say contract, and say social network. And then we'll use some open and curly braces. And we'll put the rest of the remaining code inside of here. Now inside of here, I just want to implement some really basic behavior uh, to ensure that we can actually create smart contracts, put them on the blockchain, and interact with them in the console, right? I don't want to do anything fancy. I just want to make sure that the project is set up properly. So what I'll do is create a variable and assign a value to it, and then try to read that value from the blockchain, all right? So I'll do that like this. I'll create a new variable called, uh, say, name, all right? And we can... Uh, you know, create the variable like this, but in Solidity, you must declare the type of the variable before you create it. So I'll say string, all right, so string name. So that's the next thing. And we need a semicolon uh, after each line. So I'll put a semicolon there, all right. Now I want to set the value of this variable. I'm gonna do this inside of a constructor function, all right. A constructor function is a function that gets run whenever this smart contract is initialized or created. That's basically whenever it's put on the blockchain. And we can create the constructor function like this, say constructor. All right. That's the special keyword for this function. And we can put the code for it inside of here. And we'll just set the variable value. We'll say name. We'll say equals. We'll say dap university, social network, all right? And then we need to also add a semicolon at the end of this line, just like we did here, all right? So next, we need to modify this constructor function with a special keyword called public, all right? So what does that mean? It essentially means that Solidity needs to understand this function is accessible to the public interface for the smart contract. Essentially, this uh, function can get called outside of it, 
and it is going to get called outside of it whenever this contract is deployed to the blockchain. That's when this constructor function runs, okay? Now, Solidity supports other types of functions inside the smart contract that wouldn't necessarily be public, but this one needs to be public. All right, so we have uh, created a way to store the name, and we have set the value for the name inside the constructor function that's gonna get called once and only once when the smart contract is run. So now we need a way to actually read this. You know, we have the variable value, but we can't read it yet. We do that just like this. Uh, we say string public name, all right? And what that does is give us a special function for free inside of Solidity that will return this value, okay? So whenever we talk to the smart contract uh, here in a minute, we'll be able to read this uh, name value with a function called name. Even though we haven't explicitly defined a name function, it's going to give us one for free. Also, this variable is special because it's called a state variable, which is different from a local variable, which you might just see inside of a function. Instead, this state variable belongs to this entire smart contract. And it's special because its value gets stored on the blockchain itself. It doesn't just stay in memory. So whenever we write this name value, uh, you know, DAP University Social Network, the value of this variable is actually going to get written to the blockchain. All right. So that's all we need to do for our basic test. Okay. So let's go to our terminal and see if this compiles. We'll just say truffle, compile. All right, I'll go ahead and bump this up a little bit. We'll see if there's any errors in our code. All right, it looks like it worked. So there are no syntax errors with our Solidity code. So we can see that a new file was created here inside of source uh, ABIs. And we can see a social network uh, .json file. So this contains a, uh, an ABI, which is essentially just a uh, JSON description of how the smart contract works uh, inside this file. Essentially, it's just... Uh, you know, describes the functions and the, the values and all the behavior uh, that's associated with this smart contract. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is put this smart contract on the blockchain. Uh, we want to put it on Ganache. Uh, let's see here, Ganache right here. So we need one more file in order to do that. Um, we're going to create a migration file. So at the top level of your project, uh, go inside the migrations folder and you'll see a file called uh, one underscore initial migrations, okay? So I'm gonna create a new file inside this same directory. We'll call it two underscore deploy underscore contracts. All right, so this is going to create a new file that's going to get run whenever we put new smart contracts on the blockchain. And I'll explain what a migration file is. So if you've ever, uh, you know, used another development framework, maybe you've built a mobile app or you've built some other web application or really any kind of app that uses a database, you've probably seen some sort of migration file. And a migration just means that you're uh, moving something from one state to another, right? That can be moving data from one state to another, from one place to another. Um, in this case, we're putting our smart contract on the blockchain, we're moving it to a new place. And it also means that we're updating the blockchain's state from one state to another. So that's what a migration file is. It creates new smart contracts on the blockchain. So I'm going to copy the code uh, from this initial one and just paste it in here as a starting point. And I'm going to edit it. So I'm gonna highlight all the instances of migrations and type in social network. All right, this is the same name as the smart contract, all right, which is coming from here. All right, social network. And Truffle uses something called artifacts um, to get this value, all right? And the artifacts essentially come from these files inside of this uh, ABI's directory, okay? So this is, this is the artifact that Truffle uses uh, in order to create the uh, deployer right here in order to do this migration. And I'll also note that this file is numbered because Truffle has to know which order to run these migrations in. Okay, 
Now that we've created that, let's go ahead and run the migrations and put this smart contract on our Ganache personal blockchain. I'll go to the terminal and from the project directory, I'll, I'll run truffle migrate. All right, it worked. So we can see that the smart contract was put on uh, our development blockchain. Now let's try to interact with it in the console. I'm gonna open the console like this. I'll say truffle console. Now we have access to a JavaScript runtime environment where we can interact with the smart contract that's deployed to our network, okay? So essentially we can write JavaScript inside of here to interact with the smart contract which we wrote in Solidity. And I'll show you how we do that. Uh, I will fetch the smart contract from the blockchain and there's a few ways that we can do this. Essentially, we want to use this, um, let's see here, social network values. So I'll just copy this and say social network, okay? And we can say deployed. All right, and we can see a return value here. So what this does is get a deployed copy of the smart contract from the blockchain. Now, there's one problem. All these calls to the blockchain are asynchronous, which means we have to wait for them to finish, right? And because of how JavaScript works, uh, I can't really just assign this to a variable. I can't say contract equals social network dot deployed. That's not actually going to return the value because JavaScript is going to return a promise here because it's, it's, it has to wait for this to finish. So there's a few ways to handle this. Um, one way would be to do this. Uh, dot deployed, and then pass in a callback function, say then, right, and say, um, you know, contract, and then contract equals C. You can say contract, okay. Um, that's one way of doing it, but I'm actually going to use the async await pattern. So there's a lot of ways to do this in JavaScript, um, but I'm going to propose the async await pattern because I'm going to use this heavily inside of the test suite whenever we write tests for the smart contract as well. So in this case, I'll say, uh, say contract equals await social network dot deployed. All right. And now I can fetch the value like this. Okay. We can see it's the same value that was returned, but this is just a shorter way of doing it. And this is a pattern that I'm going to use repeatedly whenever we develop this smart contract on the, on the client side and also in the tests, okay. All right, so we have a copy of the smart contract. We can inspect the address on the blockchain. Contract to address. Oops, sorry, two S's. There we go. There's the unique address of the smart contract. This tells us where it's located on the blockchain. If you have this address in the ABI, um, you can, you know, interact with it. The next thing we want to do is uh, try to read the name, just like we said here, all right? And we can also fetch that value like this. We can say uh, name equals await uh, contract dot name, because we also have to wait for this to finish because, it, because it's an asynchronous call. So name equals await contract name, all right? You'll notice this says undefined here, um, we simply need to return the name by retyping the variable. Say name, hit enter. There you go. Awesome. DAP University Social Network. So it worked. The value is set whenever the contract was deployed to the blockchain, and we can successfully read the name with this uh, public variable value. You can see that Solidity gave us this reader function dot name for free. All right, so we successfully set the entire project up. We've started a blockchain, right, that has some accounts with some Ether. We've created a client-side website, uh, which we're going to develop out later. But, you know, we started this web server here. We've, uh, you know, started our smart contract, and we have deployed it to the blockchain. And we talked to the smart contract inside the Truffle console. So congratulations. You're off to a great start. In the next section, we're going to continue building out this smart contract and actually set up a test suite that's going to allow us to iterate on it and add new features. All right, so let's go ahead and go to that next section.